The Mini 3 Pro, R2S and Mavic 3 are the three models of the current DJI line, offering full hyperlapse capabilities. I will compare the feature of each model and show different examples of hyperlapse to compare the quality, so that at the end of this video we can decide which model is the hyperlapse champion. As some of you know, I'm addicted to time lapses and hyperlapses of all kinds. Drones are the perfect tool for hyperlapses, as they can move smoothly in all directions with seamless transition between shots, like a dolly in the sky. The point of view can be positioned at different heights, thus avoiding visual obstacles and offering unexpected perspectives. First of all, a quick look at the specs for photos for all the three different models, as the quality of the individual image is important for the resulting time lapse. The Mini 3 Pro has a respectable sensor size of 1 over 1.3 inches. The smaller of the three models analyzed here, but much bigger than the one of the Mini 2. It has a very wide fixed aperture of f1.7, much wider than the other two models. And this explains the excellent performance of this model in low light and in high dynamic range photography. The real photo resolution of the Mini 3 Pro is 12 megapixel, and a small weakness of this drone for photography is the slight lack of detail in elements relatively far away. There is a so called 48 megapixel mode that increases detail in easy light conditions, but it is not available when shooting hyperlapses. The Mini 3 Pro is the only model that can rotate the camera to shoot vertical hyperlapses, an important feature for users active on social media platforms. Another important advantage of the Mini 3 Pro is the weight below the threshold of 250 grams, for more relaxed regulations in many countries, especially for urban flying. On the other hand, this lightweight model has a lower wind resistance compared to the bigger ones, Therefore, I would not suggest it to user living in very windy areas. You can watch my video about photography with the Mini 3 Pro by clicking on the link on the screen. I have done plenty of specific video about hyperlapses with these models. I will add a playlist at the end of this video. The r 2 has a bigger 1 inch sensor with a fixed aperture of 2.8. The real photo resolution is 20 megapixel. This model is a favorite of many for photo quality, with excellent detail and very natural colors. The flagship model of the DJI Prosumer line, the Mavic 3, has a much larger 4 3rd of an inch sensor and is the only one offering manual aperture, which makes exposing for hyperlapses much more flexible without the need of constantly swapping ND filters. The photo resolution is 20 megapixel, the same as for the R2S. For hyperlapses, ND filters are always needed. You will find in the description info about the filter I suggest for each of these models. Another key point for hyperlapses is battery life, as this will impact the length of the resulting short movie and the frequency of shot. Don't hesitate to hit the like button if you enjoy this video. In my opinion, the minimum length for an interesting hyperlapse is 10 seconds. If possible, I prefer to take 300 photos for a final short movie of just above 12 seconds. In the case of transitions from day to night or night to day, it would be preferable to have longer hyperlapses, over 20 seconds. But this is rarely possible with drones due to battery life. The interval between each photo is another relevant consideration. It takes 5 minutes to shoot 300 photos at an interval of 1 shot per second. In most cases, the interval used with drones will be 3 or 4 seconds for a shooting time of 15 or 20 minutes, which remains within the battery life of the three models, considering also the time needed to set up the hyperlapse and for a safe return to home. An interval of 3 or 4 seconds is excellent for scenes with cars, boats and people walking. When the movement is mostly from clouds, a longer interval of 5 or 6 seconds might be preferable, but it is only available with the Mavic 3 or with the Mini 3 Pro equipped with a special battery. 
The Mini 3 Pro has an announced battery life for 34 minutes, which is excellent. It is also possible to purchase a plus battery for an announced maximum time of 47 minutes. I strongly recommend it to users who are serious about hyperlapses, as it opens up new possibility in terms both of the length of the movie and the interval between each shot. Sadly, this battery is not available in Europe. The Air 2S has an announced maximum flight time of 31 minutes, which is below the standard of the current DJI models. With this drone, we are limited to 12 second hyperlapses, with a maximum interval of one photo every 4 seconds. The Mavic 3 has an announced battery life of a whopping 46 minutes. The longer flying time, together with the variable aperture, makes this model the ideal tool for users seriously involved in time lapses and hyperlapses. The settings for hyperlapses in the GI Fly app are now practically the same in all three models. Please refer to my tutorials for hyperlapse with each of the three models in the playlist at the end of this video. By far the most useful of the four hyperlapse mode is Waypoints, the one I use on most occasions. It can perform practically all sorts of complex moves in a very simple and intuitive way. It can also save missions that can be reused with just one click, and this is extremely useful. I've done a specific tutorial about Waypoint hyperlapses, you can watch it by clicking on the link on the screen. The mode course lock can now be dismissed, as the same moves are easier to perform using waypoints. Circle mode is still useful, as a perfect orbiting move is not easy to replicate using waypoints. Free mode is the one to use for static time lapses, which are useful when a scene already contains a good amount of movement. The Mavic 3 or 3 Classic is by far the most expensive, and for good reasons. The flagship model is also the king of hyperlapse. The detail and color rendition are a step above, even though the other two models also perform very well. This waypoint hyperlapse starts with the camera pointing to the ground and then moves to a view of Mount Etna, including the sky. Therefore, the difference in luminosity is huge. The Mavic 3 handles these sort of situations extremely well, thanks to its more extended dynamic range. It also is the most stable of the three models in static time lapses. The very long battery life and the variable aperture add a huge amount of flexibility for time lapses and hyperlapses. The Mini 3 Pro puts up an excellent performance, even though the tail and colors are ever so slightly below the other two models. The ability to shoot vertical hyperlapses, the weight below 250 grams, and the possibility to acquire a special battery with extended life makes it a very desirable tool for hyperlapses, especially in urban situations. The Air 2S has sensational colors and great detail, but the shorter battery time certainly is an issue. In real life, the flying time is much shorter than the one of the Mini 3 Pro with a regular battery. When shooting hyperlapses, it has less flexibility, and I often had to squeeze the last drop of battery when returning home. It also tends to drift more than the other two models when hovering for a static time lapse. Even though I love the Air 2S for photography and videography, it's not a model I would suggest to users very involved in hyperlapses. By clicking on this link, you will find the specific tutorials for hyperlapses with these three models, as well as some hyperlapse techniques. Don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video interesting. Thank you.